Okay, um, welcome back. We're up to section eight. Um, here we're going to do some counting. What, what counting? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, something like that. Um, we're also going to try and look at. Um, I'm going to look at some debugging as we go along. So I might. <laughs> you don't. Oh yeah, sure. I'm going to introduce some errors and I might just show what happens and fix them just because that's what happens. Um, so I'll go through the slides as usual and hopefully you're following along um, quite well. And um, we're nearly at the end of this. <laughs> okay, so we've looked at pulling out specific letters from a string. So um, here. Um, pulls out the, f the first one, which is zero, and we can change that to three, and that'll pull out any one, two, oh, I might change that to five, because there's two L's. So two, three, four, five, but it's actually that one there because we count from zero. Um, that's called index. So the number is an index, um, and that's one of the reasons we see, often see I used for looping, because um, we use it as an index in these arrays of characters. Um, okay, so we really have to remember that indexes start at zero, and the last um, character is actually one less than the total number. It's just like we have 10 digits, but we only go up to nine because we count zero. Um, and you can access the reverse order. So we can go um, minus one is the last one, and minus five is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So um, it counts backwards from the end. So that's pretty handy. Okay. Um, <coughs> substrings. So sub, me, or sub is like a part of. It's a below, so sub, so a bit of a string. So we're going to look at some substrings, which is chunks of a string, um, a piece of a string. So not a piece of string which you type people up, piece of string which is a section, uh, a group or collection of characters. So if we go print sentence zero colon three, we're actually slicing the string up. And if I let's look at this, the so this one here, the so that is much nicer than chunking it that way. Um, it starts at zero and it goes up to not including the fourth element, not the third element, the fourth element. So zero, one, two, and it doesn't include the fourth element. <coughs> um, so hello world, we're going to print zero to five, and then six to eleven. Hello world. So and we can change those around. Uh, if we wanted to go one to five, it would be hello world. <coughs> and if you don't know the length of a string, we can use the length len. Actually, guess what len is short for? Length. So from third character to the last character. What does this do? Let's see. It goes hello world and then world. Um, that's a bit clunky. So Python has, the, um, like in Python, if you leave out the last one, it will do it up to the end. So exactly the same. Um, and if you do something silly, Python just goes, don't know what you're talking about, and it returns an empty string, so nothing. So Python's pretty handy like that. Um, minus 10, bang. So minus 10, ah, it goes there to the end. What about minus 10 to minus to 130? So it does its best job, minus 10 to minus 30, empty string. So you can play around with those. Python's pretty handy at um, not crashing because you, you do something that's not safe. Um, <coughs> so we can't, we've got this term called immutable. Immutable means cannot be changed. So um, once you create a string, so x equals hello world, you cannot change an existing character in the string. So let's have a look. Fail. Okay, so you need to create a new string by slicing up or joining together or adding bits and pieces and then saving the results back into the original string. So if you wanted to do this one here, um, so we want to change the original string to with an x. So we're doing so x plus and we're doing the existing string from the first character all the way to the end. It's not a string, so it's exactly what we've got there. Um, print x. So that is a substitution. So we're taking the first character, or we're taking that block, and we're adding it to x. So there are easier ways to do that, which we'll learn a bit later. <coughs> so sloth speak. This is our first problem for counting. So we're writing a book with a character who has a sloth. To make it clear in the book that your character speaks very slowly, you repeat letters and words that are said by this character. So we're going to write a program to read a single word and turn it into sloth speak. It will always be in lowercase. If the word starts with a vowel, repeat the first letter 10 times. If the word doesn't start with a vowel, the program should repeat the second letter 10 times. So we'll read the hint because it's a little bit of information. The nice way to check if the letter is a vowel is to check if it's one of the letters in A, E, I, O, U. If letter equals A, if letter is in there, print the letter is a vowel. So let's, we might just grab that. Um, yeah, so we'll grab that one. And let's have a look. A, so we run, the letter is a vowel. Okay, so let's just modify this because we're going to, so what if we've got a word equals bread or hello? 
So letter is, we check if the first letter is a vowel, so it is word zero. So run the code, we do nothing. If I go hello, the letter is a vowel. So we're going to use a variation on that. So we know how to input a word, which is really easy. Input, uh, enter a word, colon, close the quotes and close the brackets. Now, we're just going to say if word zero in that, what do we need to do? Print 10 times. Okay. Print word zero. Remember, we do the times 10. And then we're just going to go plus. So we've got one of the vowels plus word one all the way to the end. And that should be it. And if it's not the first one, um, doesn't start with a vowel, we're going to go plus print. So we're going to go word zero, the first word, plus word one times 10 plus word two all the way to the end. <coughs> so we're, in, we're grabbing some input and putting it into a variable called word. Then we're saying is the first letter in our inputted word, um, A-E-I-A-U, if it is, we're going to print that 10 times and then the rest of the word. If it's not, we're going to print the first letter and then 10 times the second letter and then the rest of the word. So let's run that and see how we go. Enter the word and. So let's have a look. Goodbye. And run. Hello. Let's run it. Fred. So there you go. <coughs> let's have a look and see how it goes. Yay, we passed. So there you go. All right. So next one is checking ends of the string. We've seen that um, you can call a method a string, like upper and um, introduce a couple of string methods for converting strings to upper and lowercase and replacing bits of a string. So a few more tricks with what starts with and ends with. So they return true or false. So just see, no, it starts with, yep, it does. Ends with, doesn't because we added an S in, so that's pretty cool. Okay, making decisions inside of the loop. So using the if statement, we're going to write some short programs. Line equals input, enter line. If it's cat, I see cat. Otherwise, we're going to print, I don't see cat. Okay, so really easy. Dog, no cat. And the cat's going to cool, no cat. Cat, I see a cat. So what if we want to keep inputting line? So we've seen this pattern um, happening. So line equals input, so we can go. I see a cat, else no cat, and we keep going. So we've seen the pattern um, of input a line and then keep going. Um, and this will just repeat forever. So enter line, dog, cat, dog, bird. So there's no exit to loop, but we can put a if, else, if, else, whatever we want inside the loop. Um, but we don't have a check. We're just checking that line exists. So to exit out of this, and it stops. So if we enter a empty line, it will stop. Um, so, inventing is important. Yeah, let's look at this. This will say, enter line code, hello, um, cat, dog. What if I stop that? And I indent there. So, indenting is important. So, make sure that the indents are separate blocks of code. So, uh, so check your indenting. Sometimes it won't throw an error. Like if this one will throw an error, it'll just go um, indentation error. But here, it's an error, but it's a logical error because this is only going to ever run in the no cat. So I need to make sure that it's lined up, runs after the else. Very, very important. So, ah, too long, didn't read. So um, great Chrome extension that you can use for that, but just gives you a um, summary. So we're going to write a root program to claim when the line of input is too long. So 30 characters too much, I would agree with that, and we're going to, if it's too long, we're going to go too long, didn't read, if it's um, less than 30, we're going to say, I read it. So, where do we start? So we will need to input a sentence, and we need to go, while we've got a sentence, if the length of the sentence is less than or equal to 30, we're going to read it, if it's greater than 30, so else, we're going to go too long, didn't read, and we're going to ask for a sentence again. <coughs> so, input sentence, and it's easy, it's just send sentence. Close the brackets, close, 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 close the brackets. While our sentence, if um, length of sentence is less than or equal to 30, does it rather than equal? I can't remember, but print I read it, full stop, and else, we need print too long to read. No, exclamation mark, close those, and then line it up with the else window. Equals the input and close it off. So let's have a look. Run sentence. 
Why not get red? Not to get sorry, to get red. Okay. Cool. And you read that? Is that some? Yep. Two hundred red and two hundred black. Something's not reading that because it's garbage. Um, let's have a look. Did it? Um, stop it. Oh, actually, I need to. Yep. And it stops if I hit in. Um, and be why? So all tests pass. Awesome. So we're smashing through this. All right, we're back to turtles. So draw shapes. Now we're going to fill shapes. So let's have a look at what this does. What oh, should? Can we guess what it does? It does a triangle. Yay! I bet you guessed that. So let's um, let's uh, stop that. Invert that. Oh, it's still there. Um, let's just reload that. Let's pretend. Try guessing what this program draw. Um, I got forward 100, left 124. So it's got three sides and they're all equal. I'm going to guess it's a triangle. I'm going to guess that it's going to be filled in. What a guess. Yep, no, so that's good. So choosing your fill color. Look at that. Um, there is actually a website that has all the fill colors and there's um, quite a lot of them. How many greens do you need? Like quite a few. The actual green one, there's like, so many greens, it's not funny. Let's have a look at this one. So what's it doing? It's filling it green. Where's, I'm going to fill it. I like what? Cornflower blue. I actually like sky blue. So, and we just change it. It's a string. Yeah. And we also can go pen color sky blue as well. And run. And that will do. No outline. Cool. Uh, always boring, so we can set the background to forest green. Um, so full list is here. This is what I was talking about. Have a look at this. Like this. How many greens do you need? So dark and green all the way up to dark olive green, khaki, yellow. It's not yellow. Um, so how many greys do you need? So there's quite a few colours. So back to this. So let's have a look at this one. Forest green. Beautiful. So let's have a look at this. Ooh, are you playing Microsoft Solitaire? Um, I'm not going to look at that. Everyone's played Solitaire. Um, we're going to write a program to draw a pile of cards. Your program should ask how many cards are in the pile and draw that many. The background should be forest green. Um, the first card should be in the centre where the top starts. The pen should be black in size 4. The full colour is white. Each card should be 40, 60. Each card is 10 steps lower and 10 steps to the left of the card. Here's an example with more cards. Okay. Let's, what do we know? What do we um, need? So, first thing is from turtle import everything. So, we know that the background, so bg equals forest green. We know that the fill equals white. The pen equals black. We know that the pen size equals four. Um, what else is there? We know the um, height. Right, so let's do h equals no 60. We know the width equals 40. So we've got all those variables. I, um, I tend to do that so it's a little bit more readable and there are no magic numbers. Um, so from those, we're going to go. Um, let's use them. So we'll go bg color is bg. The pen size is pen size. The pen color is pen color. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, pen colors, pen color, the fill is right. Okay, so we're going to grab the number of cards. So number of cards equals, it's an integer, it's an input, and it's how many cards. And we need a question mark, and we need to close both those. So how many cards? We've got four index, so I in range, number of cards. And we're going to go, let's be in fill. And I'm going to make sure I end the fill. Okay, so we go forward by width, oops, width, left 90, forward by height, left by 90, forward by width, left by 90, forward um, left by 90. So we want to actually move one card width plus what are we going to do? Um, space equals, and this is 10 steps, 10 miles, so space is 10. So we're going to go forward by space. And then we're going to go, let's, I think that should draw a card. So end fill. So let's, let's, and no, that's right. And then we go pen up, forward by space. Well, and that should be. I'm not doing that there. Oh no, that should be, sorry, um, height. Yeah, I made a mistake there. Um, I was moving, thinking I was moving it across to where we're going to start again. So forward by space. <coughs> um, right by 90. So I'm just thinking, yep. Forward by space, left uh, by 180 to turn it around and pen down. 
let's have a look at that. There's a lot of code there and lots of things to go wrong, but I've picked up that, which was good. Um, I'd possibly change, might do those, but um, as not magic ones. How many cards? Five. Whoa, back over here. What? Four wed is not four. So four wed. So typos. So that you fix the typos. Um, and let's see how it goes. How many cards? Five. So five. One. And fill up typos. So paying attention, guys. That's what happens when you're not paying attention. Um, a bit distracted at the moment because there's a class to start next one. Why is my R key a bit sticky? Um, okay, so I didn't set the fill color, did I? So um, I need to go set fill. Oh, no, it's fill color is fill. So let's have a look at that. So this is, sorry guys, this is one, two, three, four, and yay. Yeah. So there's a couple of turns, extra turns, there's a couple of other things, like there's a couple of other bits and pieces that could tidy that up, could put that into a loop. Um, yeah, so there are other turtle commands that we haven't learned that would simplify this, but that solves the problem. And there are always more than one way to skin a cat, or in this case, a turtle. So this one takes a while to mark because it's got to pretend it's drawing everything. So are we happy with that? Marking, marking, marking. So all tests passed a few seconds ago. That is awesome. So let's keep going. Ah, exterior angles are the outside angles. So, um, and on a polygon, all the um, all the angles should add up to 360. Um, so that's just turning right. So let's have a look at this. What's this one do? So 60 degrees. So we're just turning by 60 degrees. So and we're just overlapping. So it's turning by 60. Turning by 60. So six sixes are 360. So if we change that to 36 degrees, we'd have to have a 10-sided figure. What are, oh no, what are we doing? 36. Oh, that's 36. And I'm going to change that to 100 figure. So I change the forward, not the angle. So yeah, so it's a 10-sided figure. So I change that. So very easy to get your numbers mixed up there. So we saw last time that turtle turns in a full circle with a polygon. One full circle to walk around the edges. So all the turns it makes out of the turn system. Yep. Um, any number of sides. So angle equals number of sides. So how many sides do we want? So what if we put four? What's it going to produce? You guessed it, a square. What if we put two? Oh, what if we, ah, let's confuse it. How many sides? Two. Hey, hey. What if we do seven? All right, that seems to work quite nicely. So this is the tricky bit. Um, we input an integer into sides, divide it up, and then we go how many sides. So what are we going to do? What's our problem? Do you want to build a snowman? Notice that the base has eight sides and the head has six sides, two fewer than the base. So we're going to draw a snowman, so frozen. The background color should be sky blue. Snowman should be white with light gray lines, pen size of five, line should be 40 steps long. End, lines, end of the lines that joins the polygon should be where the turtle starts, the center of the space. Here's another example, huge. Okay, let's start off with from turtle in, import everything. And we've got PG equals sky blue. We've got snowman equals white. We've got pen color equals light gray. We've got pen size equals five. And we've got side of our polygon equals 40. Um, we're going to cause length of our polygon equals 40. Okay, let's start off with, let's go BG color. So we know we need to set that to BG. We know that we need to set the pen size of pen size. We know we need to set the fill color. We forgot that last time to snowman. Now we know we need to set the pen color to pen color. Okay. Sides equals integer. We've did, done this so many times. Input. Um, and we're asking how many sides, question mark, space, end of quote, close bracket, close bracket. So how many sides? So we've got an integer. So let's do the base. So base angle equals, so I'm actually going to put, no, I'll do 360 because that's a fairly obvious magic number, divided by sides. So base angle equals that. So let's begin fill. So we're going to start our fill for side in. This is why I changed the side up here to length. Um, range sides so we're going to count up to how many sides um, is it sides yep so we're going to do eight sides 
and then we're going to go forward by length, and then we're going to go right by base angle, okay, and then we're going to end fill, okay, so we know that this, um, two fewer than the base, so we can go base sides equals sides minus two, um, no, that's the head sides, isn't it? And we can go head angle equals 360 divided by head sides. Yeah, and let's go, so we should go do, 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 do. So we're going, now we're going, so we're there, so we're going to be doing this, but we'll be turning left. So begin fill, we don't have to pan up or anything, for side in range head sides. And we're going to say forward length. I'll just get rid of that. And then we're going to go left by head angle here. And we're going to end fill. So and I'll just put base, a comment for head. And so we set up some variables. We use the variables. We ask the user how many sides, got a string, convert it to an integer, put it into a very difficult size. We then use the sides, we calculated the angle for the base, which is 360 degrees divided by the number of sides, and we begin the fill. The side range sides for length, base angle, that's pretty standard, we've done something like that before, and then we did the same, and it says we have to do the calculations. So sides minus two, sides minus two. So shall we have a look at this? So we've written a lot of code, and there's gonna be typos and everything. How many sides, let's go eight. That looks not too bad. Um, let's go and run it with 11. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, let's mark that. That's cool. All test pass, so that's great. And we are up to lesson 9. So thank you very much for watching lesson 8 from Quark Learning Wise Tech Code Launch 2017.